you so much again for joining me on this channel. As always, I'm very grateful for all your previous views, likes, subscriptions and shares. I'm in something of a festival mood at the moment, so I thought we'd spend some time exploring the Jewish festival of Hanukkah. And uh, some of you may be aware of Hanukkah, and it got me thinking about how people are introduced to religious festivals. Now, back in the day of the 1990s, there was a very famous television show called Friends. It's still shown regularly now across the world. And there's a couple of characters in there, brother and sister, called Ross and Monica, who are Jewish. And uh, because Hanukkah happens around December time, okay, uh, Ross who has a, a son called Ben, is very keen for him not just to celebrate Christmas, but also be aware of his Jewish culture uh, and wants to teach him about Hanukkah. And the episode is very famous because uh, Ross can't find anything vaguely Christmassy, vaguely anything to do with Hanukkah to dress up as. So he finds an armadillo costume. That's all they have left. And the idea of the holiday armadillo is born. And with the holiday armadillo, you can still get lots of merchandise today with T-shirts and jumpers. Just have a little look uh, on, on Google. But the point is, is that um, for that episode, he tells uh, Ben the story of Hanukkah. And it just got me thinking about, was that the first time that many people of a certain generation knew about the festival? Um, so I thought we'd find out uh, a little bit more about Hanukkah. And of course, the first thing I did was go to Google. And I love that little trick where you define a word and you get a little um, a little flow chart, uh, an explanation of what a word means. And the word Hanukkah comes from the Hebrew language, meaning consecration. And consecration is when you make something holy or sacred or special. OK, and the festival marks a time where the temple in Jerusalem, Jerusalem was made special and set aside for God again. Now, what's interesting is that word uh, consecration, make something holy or sacred. Because I got thinking about uh, holy places, and of course, there's synagogues, there's churches, there's mosques, but also there can be places. This is Stonehenge in Salisbury in the United Kingdom, uh, a place that is seen as very significant in uh, the pagan rituals. And you might want to think about what other holy places can you think about, but how different, so how diverse. Uh, of holy places can you think of? So you might think of a, a really ornate ancient uh, building that was hand carved, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, maybe uh, and compare that with a brand new building that was only built, you know, uh, a, a couple of weeks ago. Just think about how uh, religion takes a place and makes it sacred, makes it holy as a focal point for its worshippers uh, and also those it wants to introduce uh, to its faith. Anyway, we need to go back 2000 years uh, to uh, the evil empire of the Syrian and Greeks under uh, Antiochus. They had uh, invaded Israel and uh, a very effective way of uh, controlling a population, particular uh, if you are an invading force, is to suppress the culture. And this went on. Shabbat was banned. That is the practice of having a day of rest on Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. Uh, circumcision was banned as well uh, and that was a very important part of uh, Jewish faith because it symbolized that covenant with Abraham and kosher food was also outlawed so it's a very brutal regime a very brutal way of trying to uh, suppress and to keep um, the Jewish people uh, under control but of course uh, that's not the end of the story because what happened is we need to go to the village of Modin and in that village uh, some of the uh, Greek Syrian henchmen uh, the army set up an altar uh, for sacrifices and of course they tried to encourage uh, Jews to uh, use this altar that was never going to happen and what happened is that a guy called Matiyahu actually fought back along with some others uh, they destroyed the altar they killed uh, some of the uh, uh, the army and as a result, they fled to the hills. But when they fled to the hills, they didn't just cower away and hide. They actually started a process of fighting back. They're like guerrilla warfare, hit and run tactics, uh, trying to uh, harass and annoy the enemy. Many, many Jews joined. 
and Matiyahu realised that he needed to nominate uh, a leader for when he passed away and he nominated someone by the name of Judah and Judah himself went on to be a great tactician and leader as well and a very famous example is that he fended off 40,000 of the invading army but we just need to have a little pause and think about names now Judah uh, had a nickname the hammer and hammer in Hebrew is Maccabee and so that as a result the group of uh, people can know as the Maccabees okay uh so judah's uh, followers became known as the maccabees and uh it got me thinking about why a name so important especially in religion and it's something you might want to consider as well think about how in christianity peter is known as the rock by jesus because that's the foundation of the church he builds the church think about how in uh, sikhism the, the name guru okay someone who is wise who guides you uh through the darkness and shows you the light uh, names of power and uh, names live on and uh, the Maccabees names lives on today through festival of Hanukkah so um, it was very important of course that the city of Jerusalem was liberated so the Judah and the Maccabees make their way down uh, they get to the temple they realized um, that it's been desecrated, it's been destroyed, there are other idols there, other gods, okay, uh, and they realise they've got to try and uh, get it back into a state where it's fit for worship. Now, the menorah, uh, which was traditionally there in the synagogue, had been stolen, so they make uh, another one, and then they have another problem, because there's only enough oil for one day okay uh, it takes eight days for new oil to be made this is where the miracle of Hanukkah comes in because God made that oil last for eight days until some new oil was available and uh, it's a great celebration of God fulfilling his covenant and making sure that that place that synagogue that temple was holy okay and it is still recognised today in uh, the festival through a Hanukkah. Now you'll notice, okay, there's a difference between a menorah and a Hanukkah. And a Hanukkah has nine candlesticks or nine branches. And during the festival of Hanukkah, uh, what will happen is that a candle is lit on each night. So first night, one candle next night two candles and so forth until you make sure that you have them all lit uh, and that symbolizes when there was uh, enough oil uh, to be made it's a remarkable moment and uh, it celebrates uh, i guess the, the the faith that the maccabees had and also shows god working in the lives of his people and um, there's lots of things that happen at the festival okay so yeah there's parties and there's gifts and so forth but one thing i just wanted to focus on uh was the dreidel now the dreidel is a traditional jewish spinning uh top and uh there's a little bit of i love the kind of origin stories of this one of that is that um when under uh the, the empire um jews are not allowed to study their their holy book are uh, not allowed to study the laws of the torah and uh, the story goes is that uh they were studying and they heard sort of the army at the door okay they would sort of quickly hide the scrolls and then they would sort of play with this dreidel it looks like they were just sort of gambling or playing or having fun and what's interesting is that uh the four sides of the dreidel uh represent the first letters of the phrase great miracle happened here referring back uh to uh the oil not running out in the temple Anyway, one thing you might want to consider is can you think of other games that people play at festivals and why they're so useful and uh, how they help people to remember their stories. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm very grateful as always. And of course, enjoy your learning. Uh -huh.